Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month we're taking a look at Plex Dash again. If you're not familiar with Plex Dash, it is a mobile app that allows you to monitor your server on an iPhone or an Android device. And they've just added a bunch of new features that in addition to all the great monitoring you could do in the past, now allows you to do a lot of server administration that was typically only available to you using a web browser. So we're gonna take a closer look at this and see what it's all about in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what Plex Dash is all about. All right, so let's dive right in. And if you've used Plex Dash before, some of these screens will look familiar, but I will point out some of the new features as we work our way through the overview here. So this is the now playing screen, and I've got this installation of Plex Dash pointed at my primary Plex server. And if I spin up another piece of media on another phone here from another user, uh, once that media starts playing back, that movie now will appear on the list here. And I can monitor what my server is doing here in real time. Now, if your Plex Dash doesn't show you the details about the video resolution and transcoding, what you need to do is go up here to the upper right hand corner and select expanded view. Otherwise it's going to look like this. I like to know how the transcoding is going and I often use Plex Dash to troubleshoot stuff. So that's why I like to have all the data here front and center. Now, if we click on the chart icon up here, uh, you will see the first new feature that they've added to Plex Dash, which is server activity. So if your server is feeling a bit sluggish, you can pop in here and see if there's some kind of background task going on. So if somebody is downloading some media for offline viewing, for example, you'll see that here. If your server is looking for commercials from a recorded DVR function, you'll see that there, along with other processing tasks that your server might do. Now you can also pull up some real-time charts of your server activity by tapping on the graphs icon here. And here we've got my bandwidth, my processor load, and my memory load. And this is very similar to what you would get in the web interface when you look at this particular feature. So nice way to kind of keep an eye on things as things are going. Additionally, I can tap on my username here and it will show me everything that that user has played back recently. So you have some way to see what the users are up to as well. If you go over here to search, you can search for particular content that might be on your server. And I'll show you some ways you can edit that content in a minute. You also have some top 10 lists here so you can see what uh, your users are watching the most of on your server. And you can see my kids like to watch some of the home movies that we have on there. So those have hit the top of the charts this month. Now in the past, Plex Dash allowed you to do some light touch administration of your libraries and they've added a few new features to this new version. So if I click on the library button here, you can see all of the libraries that are available on my particular server here. And if I tap on recorded DVR, just like before, I get the thumbnails for all the media that in this case I had my DVR record onto my network attached storage box. And I can click on the edit button here and adjust the thumbnails. These thumbnails come in from the Plex metadata server. So these shows don't have too many different options here, but I could select a different thumbnail for a movie or something if I wanted to. Now what's new is they've added some additional features to what you can do from an administrative standpoint. So now I can have my server refresh the metadata from Plex's servers. I can still have it scan for new files like you could do on the prior version. They also have the analysis feature here that I can trigger too. Additionally though, I can go into settings and actually adjust most of what I can adjust on the website of the Plex interface. And these settings apply only to the library that we currently have open. So just like on the web interface, you can now pop into Plex Dash and get your library dialed in just the way you want. And those changes will take effect in real time and all your users will see those changes immediately. Now, in addition to adjusting your library settings, you also now have the ability to adjust your server settings and just like libraries, you'll get most of the settings options that you have on the Plex web interface. Now, if we jump back here to Plex Dash, I'm going to tap on the gear icon. And right now I'm connected to my server here at the house. But I'm going to now select my mom's server, which is on the other end of town running on a Docker container. And as you can see here, the switch between servers is a lot quicker than it used to be. And she has an update available on her server. So if I go to server details, 
I can get some information about the server and how many days ago it was spun up along with the public IP address. I can also go over to the update here and see what's new on that server update. Now I can't update the server at least the way hers is configured through Plex Dash, but it's good to know that there is a server update available and I can decide whether or not it's time to make that update. Now what settings will Plex Dash allow us to change? Well, let's take a look at the preferences setting here. And if we jump in, you can see a bulk of what's available on the web interface are available here. The only thing I don't see are the settings for remote access. So that is something you still have to adjust on the web interface, but everything else here is available, including being able to change the name of the server right here from Plex Dash. I can set my global library settings here that apply as a default to all of the libraries on the server that don't have any of their settings overridden by what we saw before. I can turn on and off the hardware transcoding here. So you do have pretty much the same set of options that you would have on the web interface, but in a much more convenient package especially if you find yourself on the road and need to make a quick change. And another new feature added to Plex Dash is the ability to browse your server logs in real time. So as people are doing things on your server, you'll be able to see the log flying by here as those things are going on. Additionally, you can download the server logs so you can review them later all without having to pop into the web interface. So that's gonna do it for this look at the new version of Plex Dash. I've always found this to be a very useful application for keeping an eye on my server and doing some troubleshooting on it, especially when I don't have my computer nearby. And now you can do a little bit more with it. And of course, they've improved the performance, especially if you're jumping back and forth between different servers throughout the day. One thing I would love for them to add to the mix would be the ability to edit metadata on the phone while I'm on the road. You can only change the thumbnail still, not the rest of it, and it'd be great if they could add that because I've got a lot of garden tending of my libraries to do, and it would be fun to be able to take my phone out when I'm sitting online and get a few entries done while I am out and about, and maybe they will add that in the near future. I'll leave a link to the support page where you can get more information and interact with some of the developers on this, and of course, we'll come back if there are more features added in the future. Just remember, you do need a Plex Pass to use Plex Dash, but I think it's a great uh, app to use if you have a lot of server management tasks to do and your laptop is not always available. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman, hopefully getting over my cold, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks again for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.